Hi, thanks for joining this special TechSoup hosted online discussion for executive directors. We call this ED Chat. Now, uh, I know that, and we all know, it takes a lot to run a nonprofit and it can be overwhelming sometimes. So today's chat is about how our nonprofit thrives. And when I say our, I'm talking about yours and TechSoup because we are a 501c3 as well. And we do have a featured speaker who's gonna come on in just a moment. But before we get started, I do wanna let you know that we are recording this. So you'll get the recording within 48 hours, probably later today. And when you close this uh, session, a uh, survey will pop up. I would love if you would fill out that survey and let us know some of the topics that you wanna hear about. So if this is your first time here with us at TechSoup, I wanna show you how you can engage. Um, please stay on mute for the quality of the recording. And if you have a question, maybe in the, you know, if you don't put it in the chat and you want to ask the speaker or ask anyone, use the raise your hand option at the bottom of your screen. Now they changed the live caption. There used to be a closed caption button, but what I've done was enable the closed caption. If you want to disable them, there are three dots um, on your screen and you can disable them. So I have to change the slide. So I want to move on to basically what ED Chat is about. Um, we are in this together. Like I said, there are nonprofits who are here today. You may be a new nonprofit, you may be a mid-size, you may have a long history, but we do this work together and serve in our community to keep it, them safe, to help the disabled, to feed the hungry. So I can go on and on, but I personally want to thank you for what you do. So we want you to invite other EDs to our ED chats and to our, all of our webinars. I would love if you would become a featured speaker because I'm gonna introduce Nancy in a moment and she wears multiple hats. So I know a lot of you wear multiple hats and you'll be able to share some insights to nonprofits that can help them. So copy my email down, take a screenshot of that. It's asimus at techsoup.org. And I would love to hear from you. So now I'm gonna move on and introduce our Featured speaker today is Nancy Shirley. She is the executive administrator of Dream Partnership. It's a Pennsylvania nonprofit organization that creates post secondary education opportunities for young adults with intellectual disabilities. Now, listen to this. As the only employee of the organization, she wears many hats, which include fundraising, bookkeeping. Um, social media, website management. Sounds familiar to a lot of you? Yeah, I thought so. Data storage, I can go on and on. The grant writing and grant compliance. And she's also a consultant. So besides doing all that, she helps other people start up their nonprofit. So Nancy, I'm so excited that you're here today and thank you for sharing. And as I said, later on, you all get to share as well. So Nancy, I'm gonna turn this over to you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Aretha. Thank you for having me today. I actually met Aretha. We were doing a presentation for uh, Question Pro, which is a technology uh, platform that is now available on TechSoup. And uh, we were utilizing that platform. And um, I love TechSoup. So I got to talk to Aretha and tell her how much I love TechSoup and how much it helps me uh, do my job every day. So that's how she asked me to be a speaker. Um, I'm sure she'll tap into some of you to speak as well, because you all look like you have amazing organizations. I'm going to share my screen here and just go through a little bit of what Dream Partnership um, is all about. <clears throat> Are we good to see? Everybody can see that? Yes. Great. Thank you. So Dream Partnership, um, as Aretha said, I am the only employee, I'm a part-time employee actually. Um, we uh, started our, um, I'm sorry, I can't, sorry about that. Um, we started our uh, nonprofit in 2012 where we had a, uh, our founder, Donna Parton, has a daughter with Down syndrome. And um, Demi was getting re ready to graduate from high school. And she saw all of her friends going to college. And she said, Mom, where am I going to college? So Donna said, well, let's find out what's available to you. And um, unfortunately, there were no programs here in Pennsylvania. I believe there was one. So she set out to change that and created Dream Partnership. 
So we, as Aretha said, uh, we uh, grant funds, we raise funds through grants, we grant funds to um, colleges within Pennsylvania to start programs specifically for students with intellectual disabilities. We also uh, raise funds to provide scholarships to those students to attend those programs. So within um, just uh, 10, 10 years now, we just had our birthday, um, we have granted over uh, 234 scholarships to students totaling over $967,000. We have um, 10 programs right now that um, we uh, provide funding to that we started. Um, all of those programs, um, the students that ap apply to those programs are also eligible for scholarships as well. Um, we just expanded our network to include other programs that we did not fund uh, to make their students eligible for scholarships as well. So here's some of our, our students across, across the state here. Um, and uh, this is my contact information. So as Aretha said, I am um, the only employee of Dream Partnership. Um, I also consult uh, for other nonprofits here in Pennsylvania. Um, and when we first started um, with the concept of Dream Partnership, um, we uh, actually had a fiscal sponsor. And um, it was an, another large organization here in Pennsylvania. So we started out with them as being our fiscal sponsor until we were able to get our own 501c3. Um, and then we were under their umbrella for a period of time. And then um, we decided that we would go, we would move out onto our own. So when we did that, um, there was a lot of things that we were not handling. I was not handling um, because the fiscal sponsor did that for us. So payroll, um, all of the uh, compliance filings with uh, charitable organizations through um, the Department of State, um, our bookkeeping, our checking account, all of those things, um, social media, our website, we were not handling those things. So we had to learn on the fly um, and quickly acclimate to um, having all of those uh, functions fall within our own organization. So we had always had our own incorporation and our 501c3, but we had never really handled any of that, uh, those, those other things. So um, we had to quickly acclimate, quickly um, figure things out for ourselves um, with some help um, from other organizations. Um, one of my favorite things is to utilize other organizations and partner with them, especially small organizations to be able to share resources and information. And I've always been an information person. I, I believe in sharing as much information as possible uh, and, and trying to help others, um, you know, especially with something that I've already done. Um, if I can help somebody else uh, do it um, quickly, efficiently, easily, then that's that's my goal. So that's one of the things I love about TechSoup. TechSoup has so many things that I've been able to um, to acquire, so many different platforms and programs that I've been able to acquire to make my job easier and on a shoestring budget. So even though we grant a lot of money to colleges and uh, to for scholarships, uh, very little overhead. I'm a virtual. I have a virtual office. Um, we don't have a lot of money um, that goes to operations. So most of our, I would say about 90% of our funds go directly to programs and scholarships and grants, other grants. So through TechSoup, um, I was able, you know, when we first started, I, I, I just kind of wrote down a list yesterday of how many things I've actually used from TechSoup. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 things um, just off the top of my head. And I'm sure there's more than that, um, you know, as I, as I go through my daily, my daily work. But even just to start, you know, I started with QuickBooks. Um, with QuickBooks, I'd never used QuickBooks before. Um, I was able to utilize the QuickBooks Made Easy. Um, application um, and those webinars, which were so helpful. And I suggest that to anybody that's just getting into QuickBooks. Um, he had so many um, quick, 
easy things that made my job easier. So through QuickBooks, I'm able to generate all my my um, donor letters, my donor thank you letters when I get a donation. Um, and I use the desktop version. I don't know that the um, online version is as easy to use when it comes or to modify. Uh, one of the other um, organizations that I that I consult for, um, they use the online version and I tried to set their letters up and it wasn't quite as friendly as the desktop version was. Um, but I was able to utilize that through QuickBook, uh, through uh, TechSoup. The QuickBooks made easy. Those webinars are, are fantastic. He has a, a fantastic product. Um, grant Station, in order to find my grants, um, I use that all the time. Uh, Microsoft Office, just being able to access Microsoft Office and use um, the uh, the emails and the cloud. So to be able to have that SharePoint access to files. So if I'm not in my office at, at, um, at home, I can access them when I'm on the road. Very easy to use. Um, let's see what else. Adobe Pro, Adobe Pro is fantastic. You know, if there's one thing that I always suggest people get, it's that. Um, it's amazing. Um, the free version is fine, but the pro version does so much. It doesn't cost a lot of money. I think with the TechSoup um, version, it's like good for four years. And it's amazing. It does. It converts Word documents. It converts Excel documents. It lets you take an Adobe file and um, edit it and change it. And it's it's life changing. It lets you scan things. It lets you organize pages, get rid of delete, uh, delete uh, blank pages, all kinds of good things. So that definitely is a product that I use all the time. And if I'm without it, I notice it. Um, Adobe Express, the new Premier um, subscription. I just started to use that. It's free through TechSoup. It's amazing. Um, if you've ever used Canva for any of your social media posts, this does the same thing, but it's got a bunch of templates. But in addition to um, having the templates and really easy to create um, you know, static ads for, for your social media posts, it also lets you schedule your posts through uh, Facebook, um, Twitter, um, and also Instagram, and I believe LinkedIn. I don't have a LinkedIn account, but um, it lets you schedule out. So I've literally created uh, for our scholarship awardees, I create a scholarship awardee of the week and I've scheduled that out through May of, of this year. So that in itself, it's amazing. It's got so many other things that I haven't even touched yet. It's got, I think, video editing and other things that come with that subscription. Um, it has the branding available, so you can put your logo in there. You can pick the colors that you, you use all the time for your branding and utilize those. Um, and it's free. It's, it's a fantastic thing to take advantage of. If you can take advantage of it right, 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 right now, I think the special is going on right now. Um, uh, the COVID-19 technology grant, we were able to utilize that um, in addition to uh, creating post-secondary programs, we also uh, created a, um, uh, an aquaponics program at Slippery Rock University. And they decided that they would create their own 501c3. And while they were in that process, we acted as their uh, fiscal sponsor. So during COVID, um, they had just um, started out on their own. Um, and they did have some grants, but I was able to utilize that COVID-19 technology grant and get um, computer, uh, a, a computer for them, a printer for them, uh, uh, toner cartridges, toners for us. It covered the uh, Zoom, Zoom subscriptions, technology subscriptions, um, which was fantastic. Uh, the Zoom subscription, you get that through TechSoup as well. It's, a le it's less expensive. Um, and with today, we're using it today, actually. Um, uh, laptops, I've been able to get laptops. Uh, you get discounts through um, Dell, HP, Lenovo. Um, monitors, they do refurbished monitors, which is great. They do some refurbished um, computers as well. Been able to take advantage of that. Um, the hotspot mobile, uh, mobile through, through Beacon. 
um, able to utilize that. It's that was very low cost. I believe I got the modem for free, and then I paid $120, I think, for the year uh, for Hotspot. Um, let's see, Question Pro. Use Question Pro all the time. It's uh, they have a free version, which is fantastic. Um, but I, I do pay for this. Uh, they're having a special right now for uh, this the actual paid subscription, which allows you to edit your links. But uh, with that, Question Pro is fantastic. Um, if you're doing any kind of surveys, um, whether it be internally, externally, um, it takes your data. It's very easy to use. And then it takes your data once it's um, people fill out the survey. It takes the data and it puts it into ready-made graphs. You can choose what type of graph it is. Um, you can export it easily. It exports the whole report to Word, to Excel, to PowerPoint, to Adobe PDF. Um, very easy to use. Um, something that I use um, a lot, uh, and it also does uh, different languages. So you can do your survey in Spanish as well. The only drawback is if you don't speak Spanish, the replies are in Spanish. So a lot of people don't realize that if you have um, a Microsoft online, um, the nonprofit version even, um, if, you, if you have the cloud version, you can take something and you can have it automatically translated. So it, it only works on the online version for me. Um, you just pop it into, you open up a document, you pop it in, and then you have that, um, that translation option. And it also does audio transcribing. So if you're in a meeting and you have a Zoom audio file and you forgot to turn the transcribing on or, or you don't have the subscription to the transcribing, you can take that audio file and you can upload it into Word online and it will transcribe it for you even with the time signatures. So you can use that to go into um, at, for your meeting minutes or you can use that for your, um, your videos if you're doing a video. Um, with closed captioning, um, multiple uses for that. And you get so many minutes per month and I've never run out of uh, the minutes and it's so quick and easy. Um, it, it does a fantastic job and that's only on the online version of um, Microsoft. Um, uh, you know, I could go on and on and on, you guys. Uh, you know, web, uh, our website, we use... Um, uh, WordPress for our website. Now I will say we do, we did hire somebody to design the website for us. And whenever there's an issue with the website, I can do a little bit, but I do get IT involved. So we have a um, fantastic local IT company that I can call. Um, they can help. I, I suggest local um, maybe a little bit more expensive, but it's worth it to have somebody in your backyard that you can call that's familiar with you and you're going to get a live person versus, um, you know, some of these, these other, um, uh, some of these other organizations that are, uh, you know, high level where you have to leave a message or, um, you know, and when you don't have time to deal with an, if, with an issue, you need somebody to be on the phone with you right away. So, Aretha, I could go on and on forever. Um, I yeah, think you I have some to, questions. I want you to finish your thought because I know, like, you were dropping nuggets, but there are a lot of questions. And I'm going to start with um, the question that's in the chat room. If, feel free to put them in the chat room or you can leave them in the chat. Carol asked, uh, why did you walk away from your physical sponsor? But someone else asked earlier, so you can answer these both together. How did you choose your physical sponsor? And explain to everybody what a physical sponsor, because not everybody understands what a physical sponsor is. Sure, sure. So a physical sponsor is basically um, a nonprofit that you would um, partner with um, if you don't have your own 501c3 or you're applying for it because it does sometimes take a long time depending on what what type you're you're applying for um, so the fiscal sponsor basically is someone or an organization that can apply for grants on your behalf or run donations in uh, through um, on your behalf um, and then basically uh, there's a like a separate accounting for that uh, for your organization or for your program um, and when we first um, came up with the idea of dream partnership, my uh, the founder was on the board of United Cerebral Palsy of Pennsylvania, so um, she 
talked to the executive director there at the time. Um, I, I believe he was a CEO. And um, they agreed that they would um, become a fiscal sponsor and apply for uh, the initial grant um, to get to get Dream Partnership up and running. So um, while uh, to start, that was it was fantastic that they were able to take um, you know take take us on um, and help us uh, while we were getting our 501c3 and um, were being incorporated. Um, unfortunately, because they were a large um, organization, they charged us an administrative fee. And that administrative fee was based on how much um, how much we paid out. So even though we were giving a lot of grants, that was and we didn't we didn't have a lot of overhead as far as employees. There were two of us at the time. Um, they were charging us for the grant that were um, that we were giving out. So on a hundred thousand dollar grant, they would, you know, ding us thirty thousand dollars. So when you have, yeah, so the administrative fees, you know, throughout um, the year, uh, even though they were providing some services, um, became pretty absorbent, especially when you're a small, um, a small nonprofit. So that's that's why we decided to go out on our own. Um, we already had everything, you know, our own 501c3, we already had our own incorporation, but those admin fees were just crazy. So um, when we became a fiscal sponsor for um, the organization, um, the aquaponics program, um, we didn't charge them an admin fee per se. It's just whenever we uh, applied for grants on their behalf, we would include some admin within the grant. Um, and so... Uh, for them, um, you know, I handled their payroll. They were all 1099. So I've handled their payroll for them through QuickBooks, which is really easy to do. Um, you know, ran their expenses, um, you know, through us. And then um, we do have, we, we do, um, we don't do a full out audit because we're under that threshold where you need a, an, an audit, but we do have a financial review every year. So their finances also come up. Um, in our uh, our review as well, but they're broken out by program, so you can see, um, you know, our funders to be able to see who, uh, how much money is actually spent for that program versus um, our other programs, and then our overhead program. Excellent. Thank you for explaining that, Alika. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. A L I K I. You want her to repeat a platform, but can you refresh her memory? Unmute yourself to kind of what she was talking about at the time that she mentioned the platform? Thank you so much. Um, yes, I think it was already answered by some of our uh, colleagues in the chat. Uh, I believe it was the uh, Adobe Premiere, mm. um, Adobe yes. Express Premium Plan. Um, thank yes. you. And, and in my understanding is that this is free for nonprofits and that also uh, you are able to create content and uh, schedule it to go out on, on various social media platforms. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So if you've ever used a product called Hootsuite, it's, mm -hmm. it's similar to that. You're able to create the content. Um, you're able to create uh, templates so that you can just populate um, the, the new information that you want, and then you can schedule it out. So again, I've used that to schedule all of my um, my media posts through at least my scholarship media posts through May. So you, I mean, you could do it through, through, you know, the end of the year, if you wanted to, or next year or, or anything like that, but it is free. Um, you can get up to 10 users through that. So if you've got multiple users um, in your organization that is, that are creating content and you can use it, it doesn't have to be social media either. I mean, you could use it for brochures. You can be, it's, it's, you can use it for anything. Um, and then you, uh, with that, like if you've got multiple users up to 10 through the subscription, um, you can share content through that as well and your branding. So you can have one person set up the branding and then share it across all the users. So everybody's using the same colors. They're using the same font. They're using the same logo, um, which makes it a, a lot easier. It's, it, it's nicer when you can have that uniformity across the board. Awesome. Thank you. So I'm going to go to this question from Kenny, and then I'm going to go answer a question in the chat. Um, Kenny says, do you use a CRM from TechSoup? So he was curious about that. 
You know, I don't. I use Question Pro, and that's uh, that's about it. I don't use a uh, customer uh, relations management tool. Okay, thank you. So there was a question um, in the chat. Um, as a mission-driven S corp, they have two physical sponsors, and they mentioned the physical sponsors. Can I? They want to know if they can access various tech suit partners and programs if we are not a 501c3. So before you had to be a 501c3 to have access to TechSoup, but now we are allowing fiscal sponsors to, to um, provide products uh, and services on behalf of the people who their fiscal sponsors over. So I hope that hope that answers your question. Okay, so Sandra asks, how can you get other nonprofits to collaborate um, if we already have your own 501c3? Great question. Yeah, so um, collaborate, like how, um, you know, I, I noticed locally here, you know, nonprofit people, we just kind of stick together, we find each other, we're, you know, um, so depending on how, you know, what kind of cooperation you want, do you need to use a facility, uh, you know, a conference room, is it, um, you know, to share information, to share mission work, um, you know, um, I, I know we have local, um, uh, and I, I suggest everybody joins their uh, their state association of nonprofits. So we've got Pano here. Um, that's one way, and there's there's also other um, other groups of nonprofits. Um, you know, depending on if you're, you know, if disability is your focus or. Um, uh, Christian Ministries is your focus. Um, you know, look around and just see what's out there um, to find to find your niche. Sometimes it's going outside of of that niche. You know, finding the um, um, you know we've got Keystone Music um, here uh, that has a facility um, that you know also coordinates with the Christian Ministries group. So you know, it's just really just talking to people and and making those those friendships um, and those relationship building. And you just never know. You never know what you're gonna find. Perfect example. That's why we have ED Chat here today. As I mentioned earlier, we all in this together and I want you guys to connect with each other. And we're talking about how we thrive. Carol put in the chat, our nonprofit is in Lagos, West Africa. She mentioned the name of the nonprofit. They're looking to partner with other nonprofits. She want to know, you know, how can we do that? How can we do that with a global partnership? They're in West Africa, we're here in the US. And right away, she got a response from um, Alika, I hope I pronounced your name right. She said, we, want, we would love to partner with you. So this is what I mean by, we, we, we work together, we are in this together. So if you have a need, if you have a question, put it in the chat, network with each other. Um, Carol, she wears many hats, but she does it officially. I knew that right away the first time I heard her speak, I was like, yeah, I gotta have her on. And as you could tell, when she was you know, going through all the products she's using, she's letting you know that she wears many hats, but she does it efficiently. So I do appreciate you sharing that. So I'm gonna stop here and just allow um, anyone to use the raise your hand option. It's right at the bottom of your screen where the reaction is. So you can ask your question or just even make a comment because today is about how you thrive. And if you're not sure um, you're a new nonprofit and you need um, questions answered, this is the time to ask right here in this hour. So go ahead and um, feel free to use the raise your hand option. If you can't get to it, just go ahead and unmute yourself. Don't everybody speak at the same time. <laughs> well, I will, I'll mention a couple of things. Um, we, I miss you, Carol. I miss you. I miss you, Carol. Carol said, so thank you for your passion. I, you know, I, I do this every day. I talk to nonprofit every day. I, I did 501c3 for 24 years, grant writer, grant reviewer, grant giver. So this is, I'm, I'm in this with you all. This is not just a job for me. This is not just, you know, a contract or anything. I'm, I'm in this with you. So what I wanted to know is how are you guys um, with doing with your fundraising? What kind of fundraising ideas do you have for this year? Do you have a strategic plan? Um, who, who can answer that? Are you ready? Do you, do you have your budget set? Are you ready to meet the, the end of the year goals? Anybody want to share? And um, feel free to jump in, Nancy. Um, hello, my name is Daphne. 
and I'm with Prevention Zone Inc., where we provide resources for exonerees, children with incarcerated parents, and we have a youth group that we work with called Young People Gathering, and that consists of a group of kids who, um, quote unquote, living in a positive environment, and they have issues as well. And I started that group with my son and his friends um, back um, a few years ago, because they all graduated in 2021. And so, but um, that's what we do. And, um, but currently to answer your question, we started having two annual events. We um, started last year with the one that we are planning for right now as we speak, it's March the 12th here in Houston, Texas. And um, it's an awards event, <clears throat> excuse me, for people who have been an asset to criminal justice reform. And so we we um, rec we have lifetime achievement awards. Um, and I've got my little list right here. Um, we have <clears throat> an advocate award where we <clears throat> recognize people who have been um, an advocate for children. And then we, we deal a lot with mental health. We award someone that's in the mental health industry and then public servant, which is like our um, official government people like senators and so on like that. Um, then we have the champion in the community and this is three different categories. So we honor about 14 to 15 people and we did it last year and it was a success. I didn't realize how people love to get awards. And me, I'm real simple, you know, to for someone to recognize me, I'd be like, oh, you don't have to, it's okay. But um, when we started spreading the word about what we're doing to honor people, they was just elated. And this year, our achievement is going to be going to um, Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee. And yeah. so- now, Becky, hold on for a minute. Because uh -huh. what are you- success when you said it was a success what do you consider successful because at the end of the day yes money, right yes yes so what I considered a success and I'm just rambling I do apologize but what I consider a success was when when we finished up all the books put in all the expenses and everything we were able to get a check back and so which mean that we did we didn't reach our goal but we got about I would say about a fourth of our goal, which wasn't a lot, but it was our first time. And so it was a trial and error event for us for the first time. So this time we're pretty much on top of our game. And so our goal is to raise $5,000 and we don't want to over, you know, just say, oh, I want to raise $100,000 this year. We're not there yet. And uh -huh. um, so- don't say that. Don't say okay, that. Okay, I got you. I got you. We've been going for three years now. So um, yeah, that is correct. We won't say that. But, yeah, you know, just make your goal higher than what you want to make. Okay. So that way, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah make it, tell everybody your goal is $100,000. Okay, I sure will. It won't be. It... 5000 Yes, so, yes. Thank you. And there was a comment in there for, in the chat room for you. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, thank you. You're welcome. I want to say, you guys, we are global now. So this is just my opinion. You don't have to take my opinion. Like I don't give um, um, professional legal advice when I'm doing those 501c3s either. But now that we have Zoom, if you're not profiting from your in-person events, people are doing events on Zoom. I, I've seen the DJ. I've seen people play instruments on Zoom and, and do all kinds of raffles on Zoom. There's all kinds of ways to make money. Everybody's different, just my opinion. So uh, I'm looking at the chat room, some great comments. Um, Melissa, you got, um, you joined Quad, it's been super helpful. Love to hear that. Um, somebody said they need to start with plans for fundraising, grant writing for our annual fall, fall festival. Beautiful. Um, fundraising events are awesome. And I see your hand raised, Sabith from San Antonio. I think that's how you pronounce it. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Okay, hi, I am. I'm so lucky. I, I just was like fiddling through trying to find when your next cinema um next session was, and it was like now. So I came on. <laughs> so I'm very glad to um 
to be able to Aretha to hear you and to hear this. So, so my thing is this: I have a set. SABIF is the San Antonio Black International Film Festival, and we commence every fall. This is our fifth year, so I'm just like amazed that we got to year five because we just started. <laughs> it was just like no budget, no plans. It was like a need um, to have a Black International Film Festival here in San Antonio, so we just started. And so it is a blessing to reach year five. And so for me, the big challenge is one, trying to get a consistent audience that will follow us continually and support us. And so that has been a challenge as well as always the whole fundraising thing. I, I really just one year want to get two years or a year in advance because every year we're working, working, working toward the festival. And then it happens and then we're starting over again from scratch and you know the year of like january we're starting trying to get everything together for october so one is the one is um are any suggestions on how to get more folks on to, on in terms of volunteers we have we're with volunteer match um and we've been getting a few interns in here and there um just consistent i'm looking to build a consistent working team um and to have an operating budget with that team so that I can bring on more people to assist with the planning and so that we can get a year out. So yeah. if you have any suggestions for, we, this is our first year operating fully as a nonprofit. We were using a fiscal sponsor. We got our nonprofit status um, late last year. And so we're, uh, no, uh, beginning of last year. So we're, we're just now getting the board and everything in place and moving as we go. So everything is always happening at one time instead of a breath. <laughs> so I'd love to hear other people's experiences on trying to build uh, volunteership, trying to you know at least get the planning um, a year in advance to get an operational budget in to have a staff. Any any feedback on that? from other experiences would be great. Yeah, you guys feel free to unmute yourself. And Nancy, you want to pop in. Um, Carol got great advice. Anybody want to share with her some ideas that you have, some things you've done that work successfully? Sure, I, I will. My name is Sheila, and I am a, a founder of a nonprofit here in Atlanta, Georgia, called Metal Wellness Academy. Um, we focus on mental health for youth and, and families. And uh, we do that through activities. Uh, one of the things that's been successful for us is to partner with um, teachers in schools. And honestly, that is where we've, we've gotten the pool of our volunteers. Um, a lot of teachers uh, wanna make um, improvements and changes, not only to the education system, but to their like operations in their schools. And so we actually have um, a lot of our volunteers are teachers. And um, just listening to you being a film festival, I would think um, colleges and, and those that are in those majors are looking for um, exposure. So I, I would recommend maybe looking at to those educational institutions to use them as volunteers. Thank you. We've utilized some of that, but I, I appreciate that. Thank you. It's getting the commitment to be consistent and, and building those relationships so that it's an annual thing where I can continually have people come aboard. So thank you for that. Um, it, it's Carol. I would go to the high schools. Most high schools now have AV classes and majority of kids need to have volunteer time for their college applications. So that's an untapped resource that is continuing. It changes every year with a new batch of kids, but it is a constant. And I read a lot of college applications um, for scholarships. And I tell you, they need those volunteer hours. So I would go to your local private and public high schools is where I would go. Excellent. Thank you, Carol. I knew you had a nugget to share. Thank you. Hey, I see Abigail. Congratulations. She said their quarter goal was three to five thousand per quarter, and they've already got a thousand dollars already. So that's fantastic. Great to hear that. Um, lots of other comments in the chat room I'm going through. Um, Laura says, plan, just kidding. <laughs> We're working to create a fundraising plan for 2023 and 2024. 
That's good. That's good. Plant, putting things in writing, I promise you, it, it's so good for you and it'll help you to go back. Especially as, as your board, you, you, you should be looking at your goals and your plans and hitting those targets and making assignments. Not just one person, you know, with the plan and, you know, I don't know, wearing multiple hats like we all do. But if you assign people and give them a deadline, that, that should help. Um, Crystal. Hey, Crystal. Currently working and planning to open a local donation only restaurant that fuels our nonprofit organizations, that fuels our nonprofit organizations, sorry, which is more giving, more love, um, where we can continue to feed our local senior citizens and families. I saw something like that on YouTube. Somebody had a free restaurant. So I, I, I don't know, but anybody have it, any idea how she can secure some financial donations beyond the $10,000 or more? Um, we got grant station coming up. We have our, our grant station uh, program that's coming up. But anybody else have any advice? Uh, basically, you're, you're seeking to get the larger grants. Uh, probably what I want to know is, um, I see you get ready to answer the question, Nancy. What size grants do you currently ha have, a, have you applied for? Because I don't know how long you've been existing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're, um, we're 10 years old. Um, in uh, October of 2022. Um, so we're about ready to hit our million dollars in scholarships um, this year, this coming up, we're on track for that. Um, through the years, we've been able to find donors um, and foundations um, that have continually supported us. So it is a challenge to find new um, new donations, new donors, new foundations. Um, sometimes, you know, you just got to send cold call stuff out there. You, you just have to send, you know, you can go into Grant Station. They have the address out there. Sometimes they don't have an online application and you just send them information and just do it every year for a couple of years until they get tired of you. Sometimes you just got to beat down the door. Um, but yeah, I mean, we, um, you know, we've gotten, you um, 1.5 million dollar grants. Um, we've gotten hundred thousand dollar grants. Um, you know, this past year, I think uh, I was up to like one hundred fifty three thousand dollars. And again, most of that goes to our um, our programs for scholarships. Um, and then we do we do have two fundraising events um, annually, a golf tournament, and then we have a it's called a Living the Dream event. Um, which we um, have the students from our local program here come in. They help host it. Um, we do have committees. So we have like standing committees through the board um, that help us organize that every year. So because we, we continually do the same event, um, we get, uh, you know, we have the same mailing list. You know, we, um, in, we increase our um, people coming in to the event. Um, and so we really start fundraising for those events early. Um, so, you know, at the end of the year, I'll send something out to everybody and say, you know, please, you know, remember us for your budget this year. Um, and also I reach out to, you just never know, um, the, the large companies that do, um, that have things in your community. So we've got um, a casino. We've got, um, you know, our power companies, our Comcast, we've got, you know, our cable companies, our banks. Banks are fantastic for not only financial scholar, um, sponsorships for some of the events, but also for volunteers, because um, a lot of those corporations um, want their uh, employees to volunteer. They want to see them out in the community. So um, I've been able to utilize, you know, make friends with my bankers and, um, you know, get get them on uh, you know, the scholarship committee, get them on our, our golf tournament committee. Um, and they show up and um, they get credit for it with their um, throughout their community. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Laura said uh, operational funds. Yeah, that's what everybody want to know, right? Because we get grants for programs, but what about the operational funding? Um, any suggestions on how to gather these much needed operational funds to hire staff? Who, who is getting operational grants or operational funding? Anybody want to share? Feel free to unmute yourself. And do you know what operational funding is? Hi, it's Carol again. 
Um, we give grants to admin funds because we understand it takes admin to run the programs. So I think the key in reading grant applications is really laying out where your admin funds go. It's the best opportunity to get those admin funds. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. That's a good point. Um, so someone asks, uh, they have a head to schedule as, as an executive director, which platform can they find a virtual assistant um, and volunteers to manage social media platforms? Fiverr is a good one, Upwork. I think somebody put those in there, very good. I saw a question from Gail. Um, Sam, so you wanna, Samuelson, you wanna unmute yourself, Gail, and introduce yourself? You don't have to come on camera if you don't want to. Uh, no, I can do that. Hi, everybody, nice to get a chance to meet you. I got to thank Aretha because this is easily one of the my favorite reoccurring uh, events that she runs that, you know, I have been uh, the chief business development director here at TechSoup since 2001. And so when we st I started, we were just serving the nine Bay Area counties and some of the Inland Valley. And I know that you guys are fully aware that we now serve the world, 236 countries and territories around the world. And one of the things I do to try, oh, well, thank you for the applause uh, for the end. So many of the programs that you see on TechSoup, particularly in the US, but as they've gone internationally are programs I've had the fun of developing for y'all. But basically, you know, part of what I wanted to say is that I serve on small nonprofit boards just because it's been a long time since we were a classic small nonprofit. And so one of the things that I know, and I'd be curious to hear from all of you, um, how often do you make an effort to say thank you to donors? Because most nonprofits really don't do that. And what we know is that if you send a gracious, ideally personal thank you to donors, big and small, it's one of the quickest ways that people will go, oh, well, but I can give them a little bit more. And that builds a personal, close, warm relationship with your nonprofit. And so if you aren't taking the time to make those people feel valued. It's a, you know, it's like anything else in sales classically, you know, you're always gonna sell more to a, an existing customer. You're always gonna get more from the, an existing donor. So yes, letters and pictures are always great. And I'm gonna tell one more story, Aretha, and I'll let you get back to your topic. You know, one of the things that told me how important this was is, you know, in our very early days, as we were just beginning to go international, we took a packet of uh, a thank you note and pictures from a organization, I don't recall the name, but their focus was to have uh, Down uh, syndrome kids ride horses to build better physical health, to feel more secure. And so they sent us this big package about, here's all the stuff we got from TechSoup, here's how it made us better. We could book more kids, our website was up and working more effectively and had pictures of kids on horses. And we're presenting this to the Intuit exec team, including this very grizzled chief of marketing, who you go, okay, this guy's you know, tough. And he looks at these things and his tears are in his eyes. And he goes, can, can I keep these? And we go, we brought them for you. And he goes, thank you. I'm going to share this. And you, you never know when someone's going to be touched. You're never going to be able to entirely predict that um, just simply sharing you know, the impact that they made. Yeah, so, you know, that's that's my quick story. And I see a lot of people who are definitely uh, using this. And Aretha, anything I have is yours. So use it any way you want. But, you know, so guys, you know, I just admire everything you're doing because starting small and building your organization is a tough road. Um, and so it is absolutely one of the things that, uh, Oh, I'm sorry. I'm reading somebody who lost their um, uh, founder to COVID. Ooh, that that's tough. Um, I'm sorry. Um, wow. Uh, minimum files. That's never good. Hey, uh, whoever wrote this one, I'm sorry. I can't see your name. I will respond to you directly on that one. Uh, but anyway, and Kasim, thank you for asking me questions about what um, you're you're needing in West Africa. So, you know, I've at the top of the chat, I've included a link to our technology wish list, which is a forum that I uh, monitor and I moderate. So anytime you go, oh, I wish they had this, tell me there, because one of the things that that allows me to do is to share your personal message 
with organizations that I am approaching. And so you guys are my willing co-conspirators in all of this. And so the more often you post, the stronger we all get and the more voices companies hear to prompt them to begin this. And, you know, right now I'm finishing, uh, I can't tell you who it is because we haven't signed the agreement yet, but many of you have asked for this. And, uh, and so every time I would get a note from somebody, I would send it on. And they've actually ended up hiring a staff person to create a new nonprofit program. That's the power of your personal messages. And the more of those I get, the more good I can put them to and the better it gets for everybody. So Aretha, thank you for letting me pop in. And uh, let's see, uh, and for everybody that's writing me directly, I will respond to you in the chat. So see y'all later. Yeah, thank you, Gail. I love it when you come to, uh, I, would have, I would have that button to have the applause, but thank you. So um, there was a question in the chat for Leslie. She said, give ideas again for social meeting. I'm not sure. Leslie, would you unmute yourself and ask that question? Because it, it wasn't a full sentence. And I'm not sure if you were asking Nancy, if you're still here, Leslie. Leslie Fossey. So um, this has been fantastic. Um, I want to just make sure everyone's thoughts are clear. Do you have any other questions, any comments? Um, we would love to hear how you're thriving or if you're not thriving. I mean, we're just in, what, day 19 of 2023 and you were like, biting your fingernails. What's the plan? Please share. I promise you, when you, when you open your mouth to speak, it changes the room. It changes other people. It makes other people think sometimes you're dropping seeds. Sometimes you're watering seeds. So uh, please share. This is Heather from Over and Above Africa. Um, and I know a question was asked about social media, maybe she dropped, but I have a question. So I'm gonna pick up that string. So Over and Above Africa is um, a nonprofit that um, is working towards animal conservation. And the way that we fund that is, you know, kind of going where there is an on the, the ground effort and also, you know, working on conservation through community efforts, right? Um, so empowering communities as well for um, animal cohabitation, et cetera, because that's where at the ground effort. So a lot of what we do is fundraising um, and we have a platform that we use right now called One Cause where we're investigating others. Um, I will tell you that someone had a question regarding like, how do you send thank you notes and what do you do? Well, when people donate um, through that platform, we can readily send a receipt saying, here's your donation and thank you. And we have like a canned message that does help. But with what, what happens, what we're finding is like we did this um, fundraising the first time last year. Um, and, you know, we really like went beyond our expectations. It was amazing. This year, um, and I don't know if it's economic downturn in the U.S. or what it is, but like the, the we we halved our donations, and so we're thinking it's that we're we're tending to preach to the choir. You know, people who are concerned with animal conservation, they already know, right? And we're sort of not getting the who we know are inspired. There's a whole group of like you know Greta Thunbergs, the, the the youth that are activated around environment, and I don't know if they're making the connection with like conservation is part of that whole, you know, climate change and environment. So we're always trying to post with social media, but I don't know, like people were talking about Canva and other things and like we're an entirely um, volunteer based group. And I can't say all of us are that tech savvy on social media. So I would love any recommendations anyone here in this forum has on like how you've utilized, you know, whether it's volunteers or how what, what platforms you're using to sort of boost and amplify your social media presence because we feel that um, that might be the key that we need to unlock. Awesome. I think I, I know Nancy mentioned a lot, but if you if you want to come and chime in um, and while she's unmuting herself, Leslie, are you able to unmute yourself now? Go ahead, Nancy. Yeah, so I am the only person, you know, that works for Dream Partnership. I'm the only one that posts on social media. And it's one of the hardest things that I have to do just to find content and um, to remind myself to do it because, I, you know, things are happening all the time. I don't necessarily want to use my personal um, social media platforms, um, so I don't really post from my phone. But again, I use that Adobe uh, Adobe Premiere, um, Express Premiere, which allows you to create the content and schedule it. 
um, through the same app. It's very easy to use. Um, and then usually when I'm, you know, I try at least once a week just to go out and see if there's any other content that I can share um, through social media. But, um, you know, and as far as like thank yous go, I send a thank you for every single donation, every um, sponsorship that I get, every grant. Um, and I include um, on my letterhead is the um, picture of the scholarship awardees for that year. So they're reminded every time they get a letter from me where their money is going. And I also change those letters up depending on what type of donation it is. So if it's somebody that continually um, gives us donations, I have a specific letter that says, thank you for your continued support. And I um, sign those personally, um, every single letter um, I sign. Um, did I answer the question? So I, I, would, I would go with the um, Adobe Express Premier membership start with that. There's so much content there. There's so many templates that it makes it really, really easy to use and to schedule your social media content. And I will say too, um, I, I sat in on a, um, it was like a, a training session. Uh, one of the um, Penn State Harrisburg here must have gotten a grant for it. And it was uh, for nonprofits um, to utilize social media. And I sat on that and it really helped me just kind of schedule it out. Okay, you know, I have to at least schedule one post per week. Um, and it did help. Um, it ticked up the number of viewers that I have and the number of clicks that I get um, and comments. And they also suggested that I utilize them as a resource for internships because the colleges have social media. Like that is something that they're learning about. So they have um, people there in class that they would thankfully uh, lend out to nonprofits. So check your, um, your local schools, check your local colleges, your local technology colleges, um, community colleges. Usually they have internships that they, they have to fill. So try that also for volunteer work as well. Leslie? Yes, hello. I don't know how to put my bookstore on, but this is my first time. We do have a, uh, it's called our, our firm was called headupbrain.com. I was injured in, a, in an accident where I had I have a traumatic brain injury. And we have so many of those locally. So we're trying to help those people with money because that's their main thing. They need so many resources. Um, we, do have, we do have our 501c3. We do have all the, everything we need, but now we just need money. Okay. Money. Are you guys, yeah, I mean, are you guys applying for any grants or doing fundraising, asking for donations? From we, are, we did have our kickoff. Was it, we had the media there and it went very well. We raised like 7,000 at that, that event. We're wow. having another one in one week at, at a social event to invite people to, to see what they want to do for us, like committees. Does that make sense? Well, you're doing some things right. That's great. That's great. So we, we have a few minutes left. Um, someone put, Kenneth put, how do you get invited to be in this group meeting regularly? I want to have this ED chat regularly and that um, depends on you guys. So uh, when you close the window, the, the um, survey will pop up. Let me know what topics you wanna hear. Email me if you wanna be a featured speaker. I would love to. You guys have so much to share. A Simons at techsoup.org. I'll put it in the chat. Um, Lots of thank yous uh, in the chat. Our website is techsoup.org, which you probably know, but you'll find all the events on the website. When you sign up for one event, you'll probably get the newsletters for all of our webinars and all of our webinars are free. So thank you so much for the comments in. Um, someone said, I so needed this ED chat. Thank you so much for saying that. We appreciate it. Um, I want to leave the final goodbye to Nancy. Nancy, I wanna thank you. You were amazing. I knew you would be a jewel today. So thank you so much. Um, any last words to everybody? Just thank you for having me. I am, you know, nonprofit people. We are passionate people. I am passionate about technology and, um, you know, to be able to stretch our dollars and stretch our time, um, TechSoup makes that available to us. So thank you, Aretha, for having me and thank you for representing TechSoup. Thank you. Um, thank you. Somebody said, when's the next meeting? It depends on you. I'll try to have one next month. If you were interested in, let me know in the survey. Thank you, guys.
continue to do what you do and make sure you take care of yourself. Bye-bye. Thanks everybody.